I recently picked up a bunch of new T-Rex plugins from their group by promotion that they're having right now. And one of my unexpected favorites is the EQPG. It's an API style EQ and it's a lot of fun. Let's take a look at that. So the EQPG is a API 560 graphic EQ or IK Multimedia's take on that. The original is a 10 band equalizer in the 500 series lunchbox format, which puts a lot of controls in a very small package. You've probably seen some other plugins that closely resemble the original, like the Waves API 560. Um, I've never really been a fan of that one when I demoed it. Um, I just couldn't really get used to how it worked with that sort of vertical alignment. Uh, but the T-Rex version flips that on its side. You know, there's these vertical sliders, and I find that a lot easier to use. So each of these sliders gives you a 24 dB range of adjustment for that particular frequency. As you change the gain, the bandwidth changes as well. So a higher boost is narrower, where you know do, just doing 2.4 or something like that is, is actually quite wide in the frequency spectrum. I find that this is a really interesting EQ because it, it doesn't work the same as other EQs. And having these 10 bands right here, you don't need to worry about uh, the Q or the frequency. You could just grab a slider and see if that makes an improvement or not. And small adjustments are easily heard, which is really interesting. And I don't think that's something that's true of all equalizers. Even with the EQ section off, this does make a difference in the sound. So just running audio through this will make a change in the tone. So in this song, I have the EQ PG on every bus track and on the master track. And I've adjusted the uh, output level to be minus 1.8. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this and I'll toggle this on and off for all tracks at the same time. So let's look in Plugin Doctor and see what this is actually doing here. Uh, Plugin Doctor is a great tool for analyzing your plugins. So let me grab EQ PG. Just having this on, running audio through it, it makes a difference in the frequency balance. So you can see here there is a boost at about 30 hertz by 3 dB. Uh, there's this sort of curve here it's not flat like a, a normal digital EQ would be. Um, and if we turn on the preamp section, you see that changes again. So if we adjust the level here, that puts 1K at 0 dB, and we see that there is a boost at 30 hertz, and there's kind of a, a really wide uh, boost here, only about half a dB at about 10K. If we engage the preamp section, it changes again. Let's adjust this, put 1K right at, uh, right at zero. And, and so that boost in the top end is more um, 30K or so. Yeah, and, and that boost in the low end is 3.5 dB at 24 hertz. So a pretty big boost. If I just flatten this out so it's at the default, it looks more like there's a kind of a, a dip down. So depends on how you want to look at it. Either way, you have to adjust the output level. And this output level is, is just a linear gain change. The preamp section is pretty interesting. If you have it on uh, the preamp off, this gain is just a linear volume control, and it doesn't really affect the sound. With the preamp section on, and you're doing a, a negative gain change, it's still linear, but if you go into the positive gain range, it's actually doing more and more hard clipping, and then finally in the last part of the range, between 15 and 20, it's actually doing a, uh, a additional volume and, and frequency change. If we 
reset this, go to harmonic analysis, you can see that there is actually quite a lot happening when you engage the preamp. And when we increase the gain here, there's a lot happening. When we turn the preamp off and change the gain, it's really just increasing the level. It's not really doing anything other than uh, increasing the volume of those harmonics. And with the preamp section on, it actually changes the balance of the harmonics. It's constantly changing as you grow through this gain range. Let's go back to the, the uh, frequency analysis, and I'll boost one of these. And you can see just even a slight adjustment makes a really big change here instantly. And as I increase the gain, it makes that, uh, that boost very narrow. So with the design of this plugin, um, with those 10 bands, with really quick controls and really audible EQ, it's really useful on buses, and especially because it automatically kind of does this little nice frequency change right from the start. Like all of the t rex plugins, you get great features like independent left and right um, adjustments like this. Or you can go into mid-side mode where you have um, your mid-channel EQ and your side-channel EQ. And so you can go nuts with those things for creative purposes, problem solving, that sort of thing. You also have four presets that you can quickly load instantly A, B, compare. And if you want to copy one setting to it, another, it's very simple. So I love that function inside of the t rex plugins. This is a really cool for making a lo-fi sound as well. So I'll just play this section and I'll create a, a lo-fi preset here. For kind of like an old radio sound. Um, here's a preset I actually made earlier called Bad Crunch. So really pushing the gain a lot, and it makes a lo-fi sound. Uh, so now let's just quickly go through these tracks and kind of EQ them to taste. So I'm going to start with a drum track. to know the body of her you oh. cool so let's play that back with the uh, EQ engaged
So I will say it's pretty tricky to keep the levels balanced um, when you're doing these crazy EQ moves. You know, sometimes you might even need more than that uh, 20 dB gain range adjustment on here. But you can see that it's a really fast tool and with, you know, it, it really lends itself to experimentation. This is a really interesting EQ and it's a lot of fun to use. I, I find myself ending up with EQ curves that I definitely wouldn't do uh, normally when, you know, I have infinite control over the the band shape, the amount of gain. And often you see the gain change um, on the graph, like in re-EQ, if you, if you do a 12 dB boost on something, you know, you really have to, it really looks like you're doing something wrong there. Uh, whereas in, in EQ PG, it, it, you know, you, you don't really think about it that way. And I think you experiment a lot more using it that way. If you're looking for a free option as an alternative to this in kind of the same style, there is SPL Free Ranger. You can get it from Plugin Alliance. Uh, it's only an eight band EQ, uh, but it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of a similar style. I don't know if it has the same sort of characteristics with a proportional EQ or the, um, you know, just having a, a sound, just having it on the chain. Um, but it's a popular plugin and uh, it's free. Uh, so there you go. I just wanted to um, share a plugin that I found really interesting recently. Um, it's definitely not the, the EQ for every purpose, uh, but it's a lot of fun to use and it, it leads to some unexpected or creative results. IK Multimedia has a ton of different EQs. They probably have like a dozen EQs in the T-Rex range, and they're all useful in different ways. But this one really stood out to me. They have two other API-style EQs, which use the same sort of preamp section, um, but a different layout of controls. And I find that this one is, is a lot more useful, and it is a different style than the other EQs that I normally use. So there you go. There is the EQ PG from IK Multimedia. Pretty fun plugin. Hope you'll check it out. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.